Hello everyone. Welcome to Diagnose It. Today we'll discuss this case and uh, this is a 40 year old man who presented with this arthralgia and vomiting and these kind of skin manifestations. I think you can appreciate uh, these kind of red colored lesions are there on the skin. You can clearly appreciate them. These are called as skin mottling and uh, this CT scan image that is given in front of you and uh, it is showing uh, this black colored area uh, in liver and uh, this all occurred after this scuba diving. And now let's make the diagnosis and let me tell you this is a quite familiar disease for all of you it is Bent's disease, Kazan's disease or what we call as this decompression sickness. So this is our diagnosis for today and now let's discuss it in the normal format that we usually use. Firstly let's start with our what? Well with the name also we can understand that it is related to something decompression and decompression basically means that the thing Earlier it was in a compressed form and now it is getting decompressed and that is leading to some kind of sickness in the patient. So what is this thing? These are basically the dissolved gases like uh, nitrogen and uh, uh, helium most of the time. These are the gases. For now let's understand a bit about it. Well what happens is this nitrogen and helium gas these are once dissolved in the blood and that is due to the high pressure inside the water. I'll explain all about it in the further sections. Uh, first, for now let's understand this and uh, when the pressure in the surrounding of the person decreases these gases these gases decompress and when they decompress they form bubbles and these bubbles are formed inside the blood vessels okay so when these bubbles are formed then these bubbles basically can block the blood vessel they can also activate uh, some kind of clotting pathways or they can irritate the endothelium that leads to some kind of symptoms and combinedly those symptoms due to this etiology this is called as this decompression sickness there is this uh, classification for this disease also it is classified as type 1 disease and type 2 disease and just remember when cns is involved this is type 2 disease and when cns is not involved this is type 1 disease and in the type 1 disease the systems that can involve are the skin this muscles git and any other system of the body can get involved but when cns is involved it is type 2 disease type 2 decompression sickness now let's discuss about why why this disease occurs firstly let me tell you it is more common in certain professions one is the scuba divers other are these Cajun workers do you know what this Cajun is it is basically an engineering term uh, which is used for some kind of tunnel or a well kind of thing that is dug and normally water should be present in that dug but using air pressure the high pressure is created in these wells and the water is not allowed to come in so that is why these Cajuns these basically have high pressure inside them so the workers that are uh, working in these occasions, uh, these are also at uh, high risk of developing this decompression sickness. Other is, uh, it can also occur in aircrafts or sometimes in spaceships also. Now let's discuss what happens. Well, the normal breathing gas that is used in these uh, settings, these basically contains this nitrogen and helium as a diluent. Okay, so when the pressure increases, all the uh, gases that we inhale, they start dissolving more. Okay, so when the pressure increases, the dissolution of the gases also increase and when the dissolution increases, uh, all the gases, even oxygen, this carbon dioxide, nitrogen and uh, helium, these all gases, the dissolution of all the gases increases. But this O2, this is utilized in our body, this, this CO2, we have mechanism to excrete this CO2. But what happens in cases of this nitrogen and helium, they basically get accumulated in the tissue. And when they get accumulated, what happens is they just get stored inside the body. But in cases when the pressure decreases very fast, then these gases, these do not get the time to escape from the human body. So what they do, they basically uh, come out of the tissue because when the pressure decreases, uh, then the dissolution of the gas also decreases the power of the gas to accumulate in the tissue. This also decreases. And when this power decrease, then what happens is they basically come out in the blood and in the blood, they form bubbles. When a gas in the is in a liquid medium, then gas usually form bubbles. And what these bubbles do, they basically block. They can block the blood vessel. They can activate this clotting pathway. They can irritate the endothelium or sometimes damage it. And due to this blockage of blood vessel, clotting or endothelium, there is vascular injury. And when this vascular injury occurs, this basically blocks the blood vessel. And this leads to this end organ ischemia. And other kind of manifestations also that we'll see in this other section so this is the main etiology behind this uh, decompression sickness these bubbles these are the main culprit behind all the symptoms that are occurring in this decompression sickness there are some risk factors also like uh, if 
the fat content in the patient is more if there is a previous history if the patient is a chronic alcoholic if the patient is in dehydrated state and there is this uh, one more thing for development of the type 2 decompression sickness in which the cns is involved there is a requirement of a shunt that should be present in the heart like a patent foramen ovale by which the bubble from the venous circulation can go into arterial circulation and then uh, reaches the brain and lead to uh, the symptoms in the brain itself so these are basically the risk factor for this decompression sickness now let's discuss the presentation of the patient well the most common presentation is basically the bends what we call and this is also the name of the disease the disease is also called bends and this is basically the joint manifestation of the disease and the patient present with joint pain and most common joint that is involved is this uh, shoulder joint other joints like elbow knee and ankles these can also be involved but the most common one is shoulder joint. then in the neurological manifestations the patient can present with headache visual disturbances and when the bubble reaches spinal cord then this may lead to paralysis or sometimes weakness when in mild cases it is weakness and when in severe cases it can lead to paralysis also and this paralysis can even remain after the treatment this can be a permanent outcome of this disease other are these skin manifestations this is called as skin mottling and uh, this is also the feature of this disease uh, this vomiting patient can also present with vomiting other presentation what we call as these chocks and this is quite common in this scuba diving this is basically this pulmonary decompression sickness and in this the main presentation is breathing difficulty and in the severe cases if there is patent foramen ovale as i have discussed earlier then the bubble from the venous circulation can also reach the arterial circulation and may lead to arterial air embolization and combinedly when all these symptoms occur this is this can be a fatal condition because brain is also getting involved due to the air embolism is there and due to spinal cord getting involved due to lungs getting involved there are a lot of features due to which this disease can be fatal also but yet yeah, this disease is not that common now let's come to the diagnosis part well first of all in the diagnosis there should be history of these kind of symptoms as i have explained and in these symptoms also these symptoms must have occurred within 24 hours of diving or this scuba diving or any other kind of uh, uh, risk factors that i explained about these cajun workers about the aircraft or spaceships these symptoms should occur within 24 hours and as investigations what we can do is we can go for the ct scan or mri this can show the presence of air in various organs of the body like you can see air is there in the hepatic circulation you can see there is air this black colored area this is the air which is quite easily seen here so in decompression sickness in ct mri you can see the presence of air in different parts of the body and mostly these are present inside the blood vessels so mainly diagnosis of this case is clinical but uh, these investigation these can also be used in the end let's come to the treatment part well the only treatment the best treatment for this disease is hyperbaric oxygen the other treatment if this hyperbaric oxygen is not available if there is no facility of the, this uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber we can also go for again compression of the gases then again slow decompression this can also be tried and for these things this hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy there are two three things that should be taken in mind like if the patient is having pneumothorax then this should not be done because if the hyperbaric oxygen is given and the patient is having pneumothorax this pneumothorax expands even more and when this expands it compresses the lungs and the patient will face serious consequences if the patient is having uh, this barotrauma to the ear then this is also a contraindication to this hyperbaric oxygen therapy so this is all uh, you need to know about this decompression sickness or this cajun disease or bends what you say uh, if you have any questions regarding this then do post it in the comment section below or you can dm me on my instagram handle at diagnose it and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you